our final speaker for uh, this the first bit of the morning before the workshops, who is uh, Dr. James Monroe. I'm delighted to invite James uh, here today to talk to us. He tells you, um, if you see him on Twitter, that he's been hanging out in the NHS for over 40 years. He's been a porter, uh, a nursing assistant, a doctor, uh, an academic. So. Um, I'm really delighted that James, as the CEO of Care Opinion, is going to talk to us a little bit about patient stories and online patient feedback, because I think this is the world we are living in. And I hope that by the end of it, you might feel a little bit less scared of online patient feedback and uh, ready to embrace this sort of brave new world uh, that we work in and live in and think about it um, differently. And then we'll take questions for Russell, uh, Dominique and James after that. James, over to you. Uh, thanks, Rini. That's, uh, that's a fantastic introduction. I'm hoping everybody can uh, see the slide and uh, you can hear me. Terrific. Thank you very much. I won't uh, say anything more about myself. I think you've, <laughs> you, you've uh, probably summed it up uh, uh, very well and uh, we're short of time, so I'll whiz along. So I'm going to talk uh, about online feedback and I think this topic might overlap a little bit with some of the themes we've already touched on, particularly around um, uh, differences between generations and perhaps about the role of social media and mental health and happiness and all these sorts of important uh, uh, things. Uh, just by way of background, Care Opinion, uh, uh, which I lead, is a non-profit social enterprise. We've been providing an online uh, feedback service in the UK now since 2005, so 15 years. Of course, people giving feedback about their healthcare is nothing new. Uh, people have uh, talked about, shared stories about healthcare in person, uh, as long as there has been healthcare, of course, and uh, there's been much research on people's experiences of healthcare over the past half century at least. Um, many sociological studies in the 50s, 60s and 70s, of course, more recently are focused perhaps on uh, patient satisfaction and then a move uh, towards describing all, all of this as patient experience. And what's interesting now, of course, is we now live in a very digital world. We live in an online world and it's a world where just as people share other experiences, they share their experiences of healthcare. They share those experiences online too because they're important experiences for people. This is a, a relatively early example of somebody who was uh, stuck in hospital. I think uh, uh, I think he had necrotizing fasciitis, uh, this particular chap, and he was in hospital for a long time. He got so bored that he decided to um, take a picture of his hospital lunch every day, post it on his blog and ask people to guess what it was, which of course, uh, which of course nobody could. Uh, uh, so that led to a bit of a furore around hospital food, some years ago and of course if you're on Twitter you'll know that people are sharing experiences of healthcare whether positive or negative um, about healthcare services um, uh, across the UK pretty much every hour of the day you'll find people uh, posting their experiences on social media. Uh, this, this particular tweet is one I'm extremely fond of because I think it, um, it challenges a common uh, preconception that social media is for youngsters, for millennials, if you like. I came out as a millennial, I'm pleased to say, on the, on the quiz. Uh, this tweet is from Ivy Bean, who was 104 when she was on Twitter. Uh, she's sadly no longer with us. She was an early adopter of Twitter. You can see this tweet is from 2009. Uh, so she got on Twitter pretty early. She was a resident in a care home, uh, sharing her experiences of, of uh, residential care at that time. And she had a lot of followers. She had thousands of followers. That's a, you can see her profile picture is actually her being kissed by um, Peter Andre um, because I think she got so famous uh, for being on Twitter. Uh, but of course, we, people are sharing now through all kinds of other channels too. They're sharing their experiences of care through the open and unmoderated channels of Facebook and Twitter. People are sharing on their WordPress blogs and so on as well, writing quite long accounts of their conditions and their experiences, what they find helpful or unhelpful. People are sharing on Google reviews. These are all unmoderated platforms, but then we have much more moderated, more, if you like, dedicated platforms for healthcare feedback. There's NHS.UK, which covers uh, the NHS in England, uh, which has uh, people's reviews on it. Um, there's a site called I Want Great Care, which people can give feedback about 
uh, healthcare practitioners, individuals, uh, our local health watches will often have a feedback system. And then there's Care Opinion, which is the, uh, which is the platform I'm involved in, uh, in developing. And um, we know, of course, and I'm sure you all have some of this ambivalence yourself, we know from much research that doctors um, in particular are very ambivalent, uncertain about how they feel about this kind of thing. Not just online feedback, but any kind of feedback. So pe people, doctors, are uncertain about um, both the motivations and the competence of patients to give feedback about their care. And um, although doctors see lots of positives in patient feedback um, and, uh, and do like to receive positive feedback, like as we all do, uh, they also see lots of negatives. And it has to be said that certainly in relation to online feedback specifically, rather than just feedback generally through surveys, for example, um, doctors are even more ambivalent and um, primary care doctors are even less keen on online feedback than secondary care doctors and secondary care doctors are less keen than nurses so there is a sort of a gradient if you like of ambivalence towards uh, towards this kind of thing all very understandably now with that background i'll just say a couple of words about care opinion how we're trying to address some of these issues i think a lot of the ambivalence comes from the unmoderated nature of much of the feedback that doctors experience particularly through facebook and twitter where uh, the feedback can be very vitriolic it can be unfair it can uh, break confidentiality for example it can be all kinds of things it can be very harmful potentially to people a care opinion for the last 15 years we've been trying to build a platform which um, makes it possible for people to share their stories about care in ways which produce positive results and minimize risks. As everything in healthcare, all the interventions we have, we, we recognize there are always risks. We try and maximize the benefits and minimize the risks. And that's really what we've been working on with Care Opinion for the last uh, 15 years. And our vision for what we're doing is that we want to make it safe and simple for people to be able to share their experiences of care in ways that lead to learning and change. And we know that very often it isn't safe or simple for people uh, to share their experiences of care. People are scared of raising concerns about their care. They fear that it will affect their relationship with healthcare providers. They worry about the impact on their own care or the care of a loved one. It's often confusing and difficult to know how to share experience safely about care. And people are generally very skeptical about the idea that when they do give feedback, that it leads to any kind of uh, change in practice. Um, but there's an awful lot of uh, cynicism, sometimes even despair, about people's ability to effect change through giving feedback. So I wanted to give you a quick example of what feedback looks like on Care Opinion. This is somebody posting a story about a practice in Hackney, the Lawson practice uh, up in Hackney. Um, and, and this particular patient, we, we discourage patients from naming themselves uh, in public on the website so you can see this patient's got a, a sort of pseudonym there and they're actually uh, sharing a, a very positive experience uh, of the practice of um, having a blood test or scheduling blood tests and of a particular member of the practice who has helped them uh, to, uh, to get the results um, or to get an appointment. So this is a uh, generally a positive experience that this patient has posted and then here's a response from the GP in the practice this is from Deborah Colvin who's the senior partner at uh, the Lawson practice um, and although the feedback is positive Dr Colvin seeing an opportunity here to respond in a way uh, that shows that they are looking for improvements and they're hoping to actually improve uh, the care that they provide in this regard but also that the feedback will be given to uh, Shazia, who was mentioned positively. You can see that Dr. Colvin's put a small sticker on the, um, on the response to show that it is potentially going to lead to change. And then there's a further response from, from Dr. Colvin a little later, just updating to say that there's a new healthcare system starting soon and that should make it easier to book appointments. So it's just a small and simple example of some positive feedback, but actually, feedback that was also taken as an opportunity to talk about improvements within the practice. And you can see that if you look at 
the feedback for the laws and practice as you can, because it's all public on care opinion, um, that they have made a number of changes or planning a number of changes in response to the feedback that they're receiving online. So here's uh, Mercedes O'Garro, who is a deputy practice manager at Cranwich Road Surgery, also in Hackney, so just up the road from uh, the Lawson practice, uh, talking about her experience of online feedback through Care Opinion, saying she was a bit hesitant, but she warmed up to it quickly when she realised it's a safe place where patients can share their experiences of health or care services. Now, this kind of online feedback, because it's public and because it's shared, we moderate it and we publish it. It's actually resulted now in a, over 400,000 stories of care being shared online. And they're all available for anybody who wants to use them. They can all be, you can search through them and you can find um, stories about different conditions, procedures, locations, services, and so on. And that means that it creates an extraordinary public resource available for teaching and for research. And in fact, um, I think that's why um, I, I'm here today, because we've actually used uh, Care Opinion as part of the teaching within um, a module in, in CUMEC on um, online patient narratives. So that's been used by a number of students. It's also been used uh, teaching medical students in another number of other places, including Imperial. I would have used it for teaching uh, humanities, philosophy and law, integrated BSc students. And here's our very own Rini, I'm quoting here, uh, talking about the experience of using uh, these online stories in teaching uh, medical students. So talking about the, the fact that there's both a very powerful voice here. These stories are very raw, sometimes very upsetting, sometimes very moving, very positive, very negative. There's a whole range of human experiences here. Uh, but it, So it feels powerful, but it also feels safe because, of course, that person isn't right there in front of you. You're not directly challenged uh, by that person. Uh, so it's an extraordinary opportunity, I think, for students uh, to understand much more about people's experiences of using care. But also students are very keen on reading the responses to the stories because that's a way to understand how do you deal with some of these situations uh, that uh, the patients are sharing with you. And there are a whole range of, um, I think, a whole range of uh, different sort of topics where this kind of online feedback can be used around, obviously, around patient experience, communication, personal care, empathy and compassion, lots of issues around digital professionalism, for example. And I'll explore some of these perhaps a bit more in the workshop later on this morning, uh, where we're going to talk about some of this. But I'll finish uh, just with this slide. So back to Deborah Colvin at the, at the Lawson practice, um, who recorded a short video uh, with some colleagues for us. Uh, and in that, she, she says this, which I think is really at the essence of care opinion, at the heart of what we're trying to achieve. She says it's brilliant for the patients, but it's also brilliant for the staff because they can see the feedback and then they want to make it better. And that's exactly what we do see on Care Opinion, that staff can be very nervous about this, they can find this a little bit scary, they think the feedback's going to be negative, very often it's much more positive than they expect and they're surprised by that. But when they see opportunities for improvement, they want to take those opportunities. And that's both rewarding for both the patient who shared the feedback, and it's also rewarding for the staff who are acting on it to make their service better. So I'll stop there. I'd like everybody else very happy to, um, to take questions now or by email or on Twitter or at any other time.